Hey guys, what is up Rubik's Life here? Welcome back to another video. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the last layer on the 3x3 Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Now I know I already did a video on this, but I wanted to find a way for you guys as beginners uh, to find a way to do it in less algorithms because the way I taught you guys last time in my other video, I had a lot of algorithms and it was way too complicated. I felt that uh, you guys weren't able to learn it as easily. So I, what I've done is I've taken the time and I've narrowed this down to four algorithms you'll have to learn and they're all super simple and with a little bit of practice you'll get these down and you'll be able to solve the last layer of the Rubik's Cube. So you should have the first two layers of the Rubik's Cube solved and the last thing we're going to be doing is solving this last top layer along with this very top yellow layer and that's all you should have left and if you don't go ahead and check out my other videos that help you explain how to solve the first two but this video is helping you solve the last layer. So first things first is notation. So you're going to want to hold the cube so the yellow is on the top at all times because we're solving the last layer. And whenever I say R in an algorithm, that means turn the right side clockwise like this. If I say L, I mean turn the left side clockwise like this. If I say U, I mean turn this top face once clockwise like that. And F, you'll turn the very front face clockwise one rotation. And if I add the word prime, which will have like a little apostrophe next to the letter, all that means is turn it the opposite direction. So instead of R, which is clockwise, it'll be R prime, which is counterclockwise. And that's all with that little apostrophe, or whenever I say prime, that's all that means. Okay, so now with notations out of the way, let's get started on learning how to solve the yellow cross. Okay, so once you have your first two layers of the Rubik's Cube solved, you're going to have something along the lines of this. And the very first step you're going to want to do in solving the last layer is solving the yellow cross. Now you've already solved the white cross, and that was your very first step in the beginner's method. But now that you're on the last layer, you're going to be learning the yellow cross. And it's almost the same thing, except you have to follow a couple algorithms, that way you don't mess up the other two layers. Now there are, I think, three or four different possibilities that you can have whenever you're trying to solve the yellow cross. The very first scenario is this one, where you have an L shape or a hook shape, and it doesn't matter where it is, you'll recognize it, it looks just like this. The other case is where there's no yellow on the top except for just the yellow dot like that. So it'll just be a yellow dot and that's perfectly fine. We have a yellow bar like this where it goes straight across like that. Instead of the little L shape or the dot, it is straight across the cube so it looks like a little belt or a straight line. And the final case is where you have the full yellow cross like this and you'll have all four of the yellow edge pieces touching the center. Now to solve this you only need to know one algorithm and it's super super simple. Once you see this algorithm and perform it a couple times you'll get it stuck in your muscle memory and it'll be super easy and you'll be doing this step really fluently. Now if you have a dot on the cube it does not matter which way you hold it when doing this algorithm. If you have the little hook shape or the L shape, you want it up in the top left corner like I do, so, the, so there's an edge piece in the top and an edge piece on the left. If you have a bar, you're going to want it to go straight across. You don't want it up and down. You want it to go straight across. And if you have the cross already, just wait a minute and you don't have to do anything because you got lucky and you don't need to solve the yellow cross because you already have it. So now that you have your piece ready and oriented the right way, the algorithm you're going to do is F, so like this, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. And in this case, I got right to the yellow cross, which is perfect. But in some cases, if you have the dot and you do that algorithm, 
you will get the little hook. And if you do the hook, most of the times you'll get the bar. And then if you get the bar, then you'll get the cross. So it's just a little process that you have to go through. So if you did not get the cross right away, go ahead and orient your piece correctly. So if you have the dot, it doesn't matter which way you do it. If you have the little hook, make sure it's in this upper left corner. And if you have the bar, make sure it's going straight across and perform that algorithm one more time. Again, it's F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. And if you now have the bar or you're still not there, um, make sure you're having the little hook in the top left like this. And make sure your bar is horizontal, sideways. Um, but you should have the cross now. If you don't, go ahead and repeat it one, more, one or two more times. And then you should have the yellow cross. And we'll be good to go for the next step. Now the next step is pretty simple and it's not a very hard concept to understand. What you're trying to do is get these yellow cross pieces that you just put into place matching up with their other color. So for example, this yellow cross piece is matched up with its yellow cross center and the color on the side is matching so the red is with the red. But this is not a good example because the yellow's matching but orange and green aren't the same color and they're not matching so that's not good the blue and orange are not matching and the green and blue are not matching and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get two colors to match at the same time in order to do our little algorithm in order to get all of them the right color okay so we only have one little color matched up because these three are not matched up so what you want to do is take the top face and rotate it one time clockwise and look around the cube again this one's not perfect this one's not good this one's not and this one's not so that made it worse so now we're gonna rotate it clockwise one more time and look around so the green one's matching now which is great the blue one's not matching, the orange isn't matching, and now the red's not matching. So we're going to rotate it one more time. See the red's not matching, the green isn't matching, the blue is now matching, and the orange is matching. So there we go. Now this is good. We have blue matching blue and orange matching orange. So once you rotated your up face, a couple of times until you had two edge pieces matching what you're gonna do is make it so the pieces that are matching are on the left so right here and in the very very back so my orange is in the back and my blue is on the left and my green piece that's not matched up and my red piece that's not matched up are in the very front and on the very right side and now you're going to do this case right here Okay, and now that we have our blue in the very left, our orange in the very back, and the two colors that don't match in the front and right, you're going to do this algorithm. R, U2, which is where you turn the top face two times, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, and then U prime. And now you have all of your edge pieces matching their color. If you do not have your edge pieces matching your color, make sure you do that little uh, extra U prime turn at the very end, because if you don't, it'll look like this, and just make sure they're matched up. And if they're all completely wrong, make sure you did that algorithm right, make sure you read it right on the screen, or make sure you watched me correctly and did it right. And also make sure your matched color was in the left and the back and your two unmatched colors were in the front and right. And make sure you do that or else it will not work. So just go ahead and try that again. And once you have it, we're going to move on to the next step. Now the next step is getting one yellow corner onto the top layer. We're not doing two, three, or four yet. We're doing one yellow corner, so this will be super simple. If you already have a yellow corner or you have two yellow cor that's three. If you have two yellow corners or three yellow corners, or again all four, go ahead and wait or watch this step just to make sure you can get it for next time. But if you don't have any like I do, go ahead and follow me and do this next step. 
So our goal is trying to get what I call the fish shape is because you have a little yellow corner and it looks like there's a yellow, 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 and it kind of looks like a fish. There's the head and then the tail, and you'll see once we get it, but I'll, I'll put a little picture up if you guys want to take a look at that, and that's just why I call it the fish shape, and it makes it easier to remember um, what you're trying to do. So if you don't have any corners like I do, go ahead and hold it however you want with the yellow on the top. And you're going to do this algorithm. L prime U R U prime L U R prime U prime. And there we go. We got two that time, which is awesome. And sometimes you only get one, but that'll be perfectly fine. In this case, I got two, which jumps me ahead an extra step. So I'll go back and go if you only got one. But if you have two now, or you already have three or four, go ahead and wait. And I'm going to go ahead and help everybody who does not have two already, and you only got one. Okay, so now that you have your fish, you're going to do this algorithm one more time. L prime U R U prime L U R prime U prime and if you didn't get it like I didn't you're gonna go ahead and do it one more time L prime U R U prime L U R prime U prime. And there we go. Now we have two corner pieces set and we are ready to go. Okay, so now that we have both of our yellow corners on the top and we only have two more yellow corners to go, our next step is trying to match this side so our corners are all the same color. So this is the blue side that we're looking at where our two yellow corners are on top. We already have one matching, which is good, and you can tell because this corner piece that's on our side is facing up, so the yellow's working, the blue is correct, and the red is correct. But this one is not because the blue and orange are not matching colors, and the green and orange are not matching. So in this case, whenever you're trying to get this left corner switched out with this one because it's blue and you're trying to get blue on the blue side, if you're trying to switch out the left one, you're going to hold the cube so this little point or arrow is facing forwards and away from you, and you're going to do this algorithm. L prime U R U prime L U, R prime, U prime. And there we go. Now we have all of our corners correctly uh, oriented and placed. And I know we started with the blue side, but as you do the algorithm, it will rotate over sometimes. So as long as you have two yellow corners that are matching their little places, you'll be perfectly fine. Now another example is where you have your two yellow corners upright, but it's on the right side where it's your problem, where the left side is matching and it's perfectly fine, but the right side is the problem. You're going to take the cube and turn it this way, so the arrow is facing the left side, um, and the piece that you're trying to get into place is in one of these two slots. And what you're going to do is that same exact algorithm, but with the arrow pointing to the left. So it's L prime U R U prime L U R prime U prime and if you get this weird funky shape or something that doesn't look right um, you will definitely know so this is something that doesn't look right so you have to repeat the algorithm one more time so it's L prime U R U prime L U R prime U prime and there we go now we have both of our corners correctly oriented and placed so now we're on to the final step of solving your Rubik's Cube 
Now one last note, um, if you don't have either side matching, it doesn't matter. I would start with the algorithm where it's on the left, so I would solve the left one first and then solve the right one. So start with the arrow pointing forward, and then start. Then the next step is doing it with the uh, uh, arrow on the left. That's just the way I would do it if I were doing beginner's method, um, and that's just the easiest way I've found um, to do that. So once you have these two matching, we're on to the next step. Okay, so the very last step in solving your Rubik's Cube is super simple. What you're going to do is make your match side that you just created and put it on the left hand side. So your two incorrect corners are on the right side and the arrow is facing right. And you're going to do two algorithms that you've already done before in some previous steps, but they're just combined together. And it goes like this. R U 2 R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, and then you're going to do the other algorithm where it goes L prime, U2, L, U, L prime, U, L. And if you had the case like I did where your yellows were facing in front of you and behind you, now it's going to look like this. And if you had yellow pieces that were facing outwards, your cube should be solved now. And if it didn't, be sure you go back and listen to them correctly or watch them correctly. Because um, it's probably you just turned it the wrong way or heard it wrong and you turned it the wrong way. So just make sure you're really careful of that. Um, otherwise... If you were with me and you had two yellow pieces facing the front or the back, they should be on the right hand side now, both looking towards the right as long with the arrow. And you're going to do the same algorithms one more time. It's R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And the second one. L prime, U2, L, U, R prime, U, and L. And there you go. You solved your Rubik's Cube either for the first time or you're solving it again but you forgot how. So there you go, guys. There's another way to solve your Rubik's Cube last layer with only like three or four algorithms. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please leave them down in the comments down below. I'll be trying to help as many people out as I can uh, if you have any questions on an algorithm or if you have a certain case that maybe I didn't go over or forgot about. Um, let me know or show a picture of it or try to describe it and I'll try to help as best as I can. And I promise you guys, all these algorithms are 100% legitimate because I just did them in front of you. And uh, this is what I used a lot of the times whenever I was doing beginner's method. So just make sure you re-watch it back and do it slow. You can slow down the video if you need to, if I'm going that fast. Um, you can slow it down and try to follow along perfectly with what I did. And your Rubik's Cube should be solved. So be sure to give that video a big thumbs up if you like this kind of style of video. If you guys want to see more tutorials on the 3x3, let me know in the comments down below. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.